you can make a yeah, I have it automatically export to the Chimera machine, oh, the yeah. data, so we can just pull it right into Chimera and make proper maps and contours, whatever we want. If you're looking at the quad view, you can see the map that Dan and Chris are talking about. Yeah, so yeah, it's for anybody tuning in. That's the, uh, we took a few minutes yesterday when we visited this site to sweep it with the uh, Norbit mapping system. So that's the, what, data from yesterday so we were sweeping the one uphill this was just like bonus data yeah we were we were sweeping this and that's right. all bonus data that we got from looking down the hill huh. but that's what I'm saying like these high altitude surveys are that's very huge. good for situational awareness yeah that's a huge path Roger I'm coming up a bit here I'm about to you uh, want any more tether yeah. or is that as you want to no, I'm about to fly off the map there, so... Yeah, there surely isn't anything off the map, so... I'll do, uh... <laughs> that's the edge of the world there. I don't yeah, there we go. There. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I'll um, come, come back up and uh, come to the north again, I guess. I don't know. Sure enough, it was uh, steep there. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have uh, there's another, like, there's looks like a steep spot up here near the top, if you want to climb up. Sure. All right, let me move. Actually, this is really Larry, nice because I can tell Larry's you. Larry's okay with that. Um, we have a question if we've ever found human belongings underwater. Found uh, what? Human belongings. Like yesterday, yeah, we found, yesterday uh, we found a Bud Light can. Does that yeah. count? When, One time, time we recovered a crew member's plastic. Nautilus hat. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. Larry is not back there, but... No. Like, oh, we're unsupervised. Yeah, yeah, by all means. All right, let's do it. <laughs> it's not entirely it. true. <laughs> yeah. Larry, tell you that. Bridge keep, now, keep four zero more. meters, <laughs> zero nine zero. Right, uh, following our nose. Yeah, this is actually really nice for ship moves too, because I can tell, I can tell exactly. Yeah, no more guessing with a flashlight in the dark. Four zero meters, uh, zero nine zero. Have there been any volcanic eruptions uh, you can underwater? Look to your left and come up a bit. Definitely. Right, we're gonna yeah. go are up we the still, hill here. We're going to visit an underwater volcano. Yeah, we're going to go up the hill. Is that still in the plan? That's still in the plan. Well, yeah. at least the uh, is looking for the huts. The, uh, Mike yeah. is very quiet. The hydrothermal vents. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think they yell you know, from halfway across the room. I will tell they you do. that I, yeah. you know, the yeah. USGS the is saying is that they're building a new island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know that they're probably building because they're They need a belt pack deal. like the across right. the mantle. Yeah. They're gonna, That's how the Hawaiian uh, Isles were built. Yeah, yeah you're doing That's good. So right. constantly happening. Yeah. They're moving uh, a little Larry's higher. back. Yeah, in terms of Where human belongings, though, I've seen a lot DBL. of trash. I not expect uh, that. I think the weirdest I thing that some someone has seen that I've heard was like a bath rug. Like... The kind that you would like put underneath your, you think your we toilet, would have DVL the fuzzy here, like oh bathroom wow rooms. bath rug oh wow. Um, but we've seen huh. like, fishing net I sure pieces. Would. Are you cans? Well, last time I was aboard the Nautilus, we were around the Cayman Islands, and there was a plastic cup. Mm. Yeah, uh -huh. we've definitely seen human yeah. huh. markings on the seafloor. Yeah, and then uh, when Nautilus was Do in the Mediterranean, there were amphora, which are basically I mean, is it, are you hanging over containers, the, the clay the containers. Um, because there's a very big shipping channel right there. So wow. uh, yeah. they think, would find these amphora from sunken ships. Wow, yeah. Well, yeah. I think it, even in the Mariana Trench, the trash has been seen, which oh, is, wow. yeah, yeah this very, is great. very, very, very showing up. It's pretty steep. So yeah. Yeah, Porra, which right are where we, uh, you know, wonderful things to find because the signs of history are, in essence, the and beer can cans of the ancient times. Well, I mean, they stored everything there. So it's actually showing up very much like what we expect. Containers yeah, it was like uh, like an Amazon box. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> we saw a spam container. I think the last expedition, and it it was surprising because we were at pretty deep depths, and it wasn't crushed. It looked perfectly yeah. fine. Wow. Um, yeah, so that was really interesting. Was it open? Uh, no, oh, okay. it was sealed. Yeah. Sealed? Wow. yeah. Oh, Somebody's so asking about human remains, but those would not last down <laughs> down there. Yeah. Yeah. Some more columnars coming up here. Columnar uh, basalts. Well, these are the ones that didn't quite make it. You know, they they the tried <laughs> and didn't have enough time. I don't think to. 
So we're at 1,700 meters now. Okay. Yeah, we're going to come back up the hill to uh, some interesting Norbit targets there that we picked up yesterday in our sweep. Yeah, that's starting to look nicer. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this might be worth doing a 100 yeah. meter move down a ridge or something. Yeah. Because that gives us a lot more to work off with when we come back to explore a place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 100, like, that wouldn't take too much time. It wouldn't take much time at all. We could do it on the way down, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, before you even hit the bottom, then you know, then you have a map exactly where you're going to land. Yeah. Just like we did on the uh, submarine that turned out to be a pile of rocks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I said, my newfound ability to disappoint people at 50 meters. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you get rocks, sometimes yeah. you get mud. <laughs> And 2% of the time you get submarine. Yeah. 2%? Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good, I guess. That's... Take that, take that any day, exactly, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in lots of venues. All right. <laughs> Point two. Someone's writing in about the... Uh, What's that? The columns of pizza boxes were amazing yesterday. Yeah. You should yeah. see the, it the is, onion. It uh, is <laughs> end of the daisy oh. chain up there. Uh-oh. How far have we traveled? That's from I, where? I guess to where? the <laughs> total, maybe Over the total. Today, uh, like uh, I, total, like, I, I don't know. Uh, all of the above, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you came a lot farther than I did, right? Yeah, uh, well, today we, we've we stayed within about a 50 meter radius of yeah. where we landed, so. Uh, but it, that, Oh, goodness. Why are we... Well, we were able to explore a lot yesterday. You know, mm -hmm. so what happened to up, our... You know, uh, we moved deep and went up, yeah, so here. we kind of didn't know yesterday the what exactly thing. things were. So what no, you're saying is we're going back to spots that we saw before, right? So we're yeah. not moving very far because we... No, it's out. flipping out. Yeah. Uh, and we are just okay, north exploded. of Molokai Island. Uh, and I don't know how far that is from Honolulu. Uh, maybe it's time to restart Navest, what do you think? Could but be. we... Uh, basically transited from Honolulu this way. How are we on the move? Another 10 minutes. It, it didn't take us very yeah. long. It yeah. took us... Uh, Three hours. Yeah, the actual yeah, solution yeah, just, exploded. Yeah, four, maybe four hours. So. <laughs> yeah. Or no, you know what? I think the U.S. <laughs> no, you know what happened? There, we've got... Direct, you know. Let me check Sonardine. Right there. <laughs> we'll get the... Yeah, the Sonardine flipped out. We should... Maybe we're okay. That's... I wonder if the uh, USBL is okay in the mempool. A viewer wants to know what's the best it's thing fine, that yeah. we found. Maybe. What's that? The oh, man, that's going to depend on the person Roger. sitting yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. well, remember, this is only our first, uh, our yeah. first site. Yeah. So. Basalt rocks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so so this, this kind of formation is, that is very special to see underwater. But we'll have uh, a number of more dives this leg. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, if the weather permits, we'll be going to... Uh, the pinnacles uh, yeah. south of the big island a uh, couple of couple of really giant pinnacle features and those i think will have much much more life in terms of coral growth and yeah. things like that th than this so it'll be probably much more colorful um and then uh try to think of the uh, some of the other sites we have some later in the dive some yeah. wreck wreck sites that will be yeah that will be cool and and, and yeah the again if the hydro th i'm looking most forward to the hydrothermal vents right yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the yeah. And, cool. and then we have mccall seamount Quick, uh, a, a yeah. deep a deep seamount well seamount that excursion. starts at about four thousand meters and comes up to what's that about 800 the thrusters meters. must have washed the transducer yeah and i think you know it just depends upon what you're doing the science the science center that sits right. here you know we have uh, coral researchers on board so i will tell you that they will say let me <laughs> yeah, here's the best coral we've seen, and then when we have the biologists sit here, so um, I think the nice thing about the ocean, it just fascinates many people in different ways. As the bird flies, between Honolulu and Molokai is only 54 miles. There you go. That's for an air route, but uh, we had to go a little longer. 
So I don't know if you want to try to scan this entire cliff or if you want to go up to the next one. Oh, I like this comment. To we me, should, this, Argus should settle out, or Atlanta should settle uh, out Earth right mission is there. far more important of uh, discovery versus a mission so going to Mars or to similar. This is our home. Jump up to yeah. Oh, that's, that, yeah. that's, I'm really glad somebody said that, because that's, <laughs> no, that, yeah. that's, been, that, that's been such a, an interesting point to me. I, I love the fact that we explore space and, and spend so much time and effort doing it. it it's certainly wonderful, but if we look at how much time and effort we, particularly money, we spend on space. I think the, the budget that NASA has for exploration is often a thousand times larger than what NOAA has for ocean exploration. And and, and as the person who wrote in said, you know, this is this is our home planet. We we have Mars and the Moon mapped much much better than yeah. we have the ocean. We only yeah. have really 25 percent of the ocean mapped, and wow. we're now starting to face really. Uh, yeah, existential a problems that, that ahead of here. are related to our planet, and 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 it's I don't want to take uh, anything away from space kind of studies, our sweet but spot I there, think 10 we can meters away. take one Mars mission and kind of put away. that effort into exploring our own planet. We we may be much better off. Um, and it just affects. It affects I'm really so kind of surprised right? the DBL is you know, doing as poorly as it is. If the ocean yeah, temperature rises like even terrible. a little bit, it affects everybody uh, because. The oceans are all connected. The circular currents. I mean, it's not perfect, but you expect better fixes others, than so we're just getting. Just because yeah. something happens here, it goes worldwide. We'll just have like to that have a look at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know, the we nice thing stinks. is that I think there's a recogni recognition that we need to map the oceans because the UN decade of the oceans is here, and not just the U.S. But all yeah, the no, other it, countries. No, it, it's been recognized, and it. and there's an amazing program called Seabed 2030. Uh, yep. uh, underwritten by uh, the Nippon Foundation, which is trying to facilitate this, but you know, we've estimated it'll cost, it would cost between three to five billion dollars to yep. completely map the ocean, and that sounds like an extraordinary amount of money, but yep. that's what one Mars mission okay, costs. I'm gonna zoom up to so that. Uh, and we've had lots of Mars missions. There, so. Take one of those missions and, and, <laughs> and turn it back towards yep. our own planet. You can see uh, it I mean, does, the bottom just of it there. It's really hard. Right I mean, the, the technology you need to map the ocean it's not the same as like, you know. No, that, that's absolutely right. It, and it goes back to what we were talking about yesterday, that, that electromagnetic waves, light travels wonderfully fast and at, with tremendous resolution and it does in, in air and in, in the, the vacuum of space, but it doesn't travel well in water. So we have to use sound, yep. which travels much slower and it's hmm. much lower frequency. But that said, we do That's have the technology wall. to do it. It is a big wall. It, it's hard, yes. but we have the technology, and it would cost about the same as a as a Mars mission. So, so it really is not Wait, a how far do you think you technical challenge. It's a fiscal challenge. What's that? How far do you think challenge. you're from that wall? I'm I am exactly seven and a half, seven meters. Okay. All right. Yep. That checks out. Okay. And it, it That's a big wall. Yeah. yeah. That wall. Yep. Oh, you have that, yeah. That's and so the question know. is, is this a place we were yeah. at yesterday? Mm. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, no, that's is what that, I'm... No, yeah, this is, we're right on the target. This is one that, this is what we scanned. This is the yeah, one this, we this is where we yeah, ended. this is the yeah. one we scanned yesterday. This is where we ended up yesterday, yeah. yeah. I recognized it. So as, a, as a geologist, I could, I could recognize those pizza boxes. Big there, yeah. I didn't think it was this big. But yeah, oh no, yeah. it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, these are the numbers. I remember now. I, yeah. remember. It's kind of, I have a really good memory. It's just really short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same same yeah. numbers here. Uh, see, I'll see. I, I've ha I have it in my notes, and we'll see. So I went is, from it, is it this one that the spaghetti noodles were on to the left? No, I'm confused. <clears throat> yeah. So we're back to the... Yeah, uh, so the, the, this one went from 1675 to 1650. I mean, we must yeah. have... We we're must at the have top seen of it, it at 1650. Done, we've gone across all the ridges. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why we can't find it. Frustrating. Unless it's like further north or something than we're expecting. Yeah. Well, I, I think we should go start exploring new territory yeah. if we can. Yeah. But along the wall. Uh, all right. Do we want to go? Do we want to continue going south or? Works for me. Right. Taylor Ann, uh, a viewer is asking if we've ever found a cusk eel. What little yeah, hint of a so current there is seems to be. Uh, on this expedition, um, 
I think maybe one to or two. To the north, so. Um, we've also seen some cutthroat Going eels. Going south, we'll keep our nose um, into it. But yeah, uh, cusk eels okay. are pretty common. Um, and someone's asking Bridge if we've gotten seasick. Five zero meters. I, I haven't. I don't. I don't know that. If any, I mean, knock on wood. I, I don't know. If, oh, I haven't heard of anybody getting sick, right? Yeah, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Thankfully, yeah. knock on wood, like you yeah. said. Yeah, Usually, no. I do get seasick and I take medicine, but I'm doing pretty well right now. Last, like we had a couple of people who. Uh, oh yeah. Were not very comfortable um, for a few days. It's and been then, a, then they got used to it. Yeah. There's there's been some big swells. Yeah, we had just had a, a very big one yeah. uh, a few minutes ago. Yeah. A lot, a lot of things I heard in the galley uh, yeah. <laughs> falling over. So yeah. never, never pleasant because that upsets yeah. the cook. And when the cook's not happy, <laughs> it's a bad thing. So we are currently looking for more columnar basalt, right? Yeah, so, so our primary purpose on this leg was to exercise these cameras in a way they haven't been exercised before. Yesterday was the, the photogrammetry, the, the wide area re 3D reconstruction, and today is this optimizing immersion imagery. Um, and so Jonathan, who's in charge of all that, found the couple of three places and we went through those exercises and uh, so I think he uh, as he probably said he, he's happy what he has in the can no more cans it's all digital now so <laughs> what he has on the disc um, but now we figured we'll take the last hour hour and a half or so and just explore as we should be explorers and What's see that? if we see new areas that may be even um, better we we'll never know what's around moment, the corner so you're good are we still planning to be on deck at 3, 3.30 or are we coming off bottom? Coming up, coming up at 3.30 on the deck at 5 p.m. Okay, off bottom, off bottom at 3. Yeah. yeah, excuse me, off the bottom at 3.30, yeah. And local time is currently 2.37. Sorry, 1.37. 1.37, we have two hours. Oh, somebody wrote in, hi, Ale, hi, whoever is saying hi. Let's kind of follow on the ridge top there. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, we, if, as you follow the ridge top, you could if you could take a peek down every once in a while. Cause I can, yeah, because I'm out at the end of my leash waiting for the boat. So, mm. well, Dan's got the the real schedule here. Yeah, uh, fifteen thirty off bottom. That was, that was yesterday. Oh, was that yesterday? It's yesterday, so I just want to make sure. Cause oh, okay. I think well. He I think, uh, let me say what I have in my notes from the morning meeting. I thought he wanted it up. Back on deck. Yeah. Oh, yes, excuse me. So uh, we only got an hour left. Yep, back on deck 1500. Yeah. Yep. yep, I take that back. Okay, well, Jonathan is, uh, not Jonathan, Jason is sitting downstairs. Oh, good, I'm glad you're, yeah, I, I'd walk by seeing the board. We have to erase <laughs> yesterday's notes. So we don't have that much time. We need no. to be back on deck 1500 here today, yeah. guys. So. Really? Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's uh, 130 a, now. It's That's probably a 90 30 minute 30. ride yeah. up. 14.30. Yeah, so that's that's pretty soon. Let me just go verify that with Jason. Okay. And uh, I'll be right back. Thank you. There right. Oh. Wow. I was, I heard you saying that. Well, so let's go talk it out. <laughs> well, no, no, I, 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 just, I just said walk out the woods. Mm, yeah, you can come down uh, 10 meters. Whoa. There's, there's nothing. Ish. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. When I dive down like that and I get in the high 20s there. Yeah. By the third watch, we'll get, uh, you'll just say, come and do. Well, then maybe occasionally, or, or coming up. Um, okay, uh, gentlemen, when we had the powwow yeah, know, with the big boss. Then I know the winch <laughs> in many ways. To keep an eye on it. <laughs> and uh, there'll be some occasions we, we where should, I don't. We should start bringing it up. I want you to, even though we're out of the box. Dan, you got that? 
Uh, I did not. Sorry, say yeah, again. I said uh, we just had the powwow with the big, the big boss, and yeah. uh, we should start bringing it up to to stay on schedule because if you want to cover the deck, yeah. If you want to yep. be on deck at yep. three, three, it's yep. a ninety-minute ride yep. to the surface. Yep. Right at that. All right, just as things are getting really neat looking, but <laughs> that's always the case. Well, it's actually just in time because I'm like. I don't know, You're 10 meters from falling off the edge of the world here on Christmas night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's let's call it a wrap and, and start bringing it up. Roger that. And thank you all for yet another wonderful dive. Yeah. We have several kids writing in from Liberty Elementary. Hi, Liberty. Um, somebody's hoping for a return of the shrimp count. <laughs> <laughs> Tail ram. <laughs> I'm over here hoping for the return of the, oh. the Dumbo octopus count. Yeah, that, that oh, was that's really it. Yeah, shrimp. Yes, we can. We can accommodate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come down. Ten meters from. Oh. Oh, oh, you remember it? I, yeah. I, I bet you, is that the same fish? I bet you fish? it looks like it the same fish no in the way. same spot. It's, it's, it's even okay. She, yeah. Is it okay? It get, is. Get, it a, is. get a get a snap of that, yeah. and we'll compare that's, it. But, <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, it sure looks like it's the same spot. I, I, spot. I believe you're spot. correct, no, 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 Larry, no, no, because what? we're right at the very edge of the map, and this is where we found. And that's, yep. Yeah. <laughs> still got the foot up on the rock. Yeah, what are the chances well, There of we go. One I mean, final yeah. goodbye to our fish friend. Talk, oh. Talk about one That's, happy I think, Is he leaning the other way now? Slightly. I think it's the same. Yeah, I don't, yeah I don't he's think listing he's to Yes. <laughs> Well, he was listing Aww. starboard yesterday, too. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He was. Now he raised yeah. his tail a little bit. He looks like a little more inflated. <laughs> Maybe he got a nice big meal last night. Yeah, and then went back to his house. Yeah. Whoop. Oh, 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 there he goes. Oh, oh, oh. we have takeoff. Yep. All righty. Oh, wow. Did, did you get a step Yeah, I'm taking some screen grabs okay, of it. Yeah. I'm highlighting it as well. Okay. <laughs> it's a good thing we weren't filming. Didn't have much energy, it seems. Yeah. Let's see if he keeps going. And there it is. He just used 10 years. He's been there for 22 years. Yeah, just, <laughs> used, <laughs> just used 10 hey, years. Hey, Dan, why don't you report this for uh, for immersive? All righty. Starting. Can do, yeah. Poor guy. Yeah, there he goes. Oh, well, he's just gone down to a lower level. That's a new position. And then, Dan, maybe uh, if you can, do, do a rotate Super around the cute. other direction as he's recording. Roger. All right, record is on. Noted. Get a nice rotate. Cool. He is cute. The batfish, as you've never seen it before, full 12K <laughs> immersive resolution. <laughs> <laughs> you think you've had a bad day. <laughs> Wait till you see this fish. <laughs> you think he's frowning, but inside, he's a happy fish. <laughs> Have we seen sharks before? Yes. Um, and you can go on uh, the Nautilus YouTube channel um, and find some highlight videos of sharks. We have some uh, six-gill sharks uh, that have been seen by Nautilus. Have we seen Moby or any of his friends down yonder? Uh, Few years ago, there was the sperm whale. That's in the highlights too. Now, uh, slowly back away from the wall to reveal the wall. All right. It's like the wizard telling us what to do. <laughs> yeah, it's like, is the that voice, Jonathan? <laughs> the voice comes. You want to try lights off on Atlanta? What do you think? Uh, let me turn my down lights off first. I'll uh, come around to the, get rid of the shadow there. Mm. Um, someone's asking about the type of fish. Uh, we said it was a moose fish? Goose, 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 fish. Fish. goose, fish. goose fish. Or a monkfish or monk something. Like yeah, a goose Let's fish try, or a monkfish. Uh, off lights on, all lights off on uh, Hercules, and then uh, if you can power up to reveal more of the wall, that'd be awesome. Roger. Come around and get rid of the shadow when the uh, dust cloud. That is, that is really cool. You can uh, come up with me. 
Come up, come up, put the lights back on me. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Hey, Jonathan, if you're listening, um, the cameras look to be frozen on the sides. Yeah, you have to refresh those pages. Okay. Does it matter if I just keep recording? Nope, yeah, you can keep recording. All right. It's just the page freezes. Just the browser freezes up when we select record. Someone's commenting uh, about how amazing it is that anything can live at these depths under this pressure. Also that it's so ugly, it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's adaptations, right? So uh, it's built to live here. It's gonna get darker and darker as I uh, come up here and get further and further away from the light. You can come up just a little faster maybe, keep me in the light. And then it will uh, completely fade to black as we come up because we are recovering the deck. I guess this is also kind of another way to answer the question from earlier about uh, how far we go, right? Uh, it's a 90 minute commute each way up and down, so. 90 minute ride, 20 meters a minute. That's what I used to do to high school in New York. It wasn't pleasant. <laughs> Subway and bus. Really? Twice a day? Yeah. Wow. I thought I had about at 45 minutes each way. Okay, I'm going to uh, start stretching it out a bit here. At some point, uh, you'll get a tug and you'll want to turn clockwise to take that half turn out. Great job, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can come clockwise. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, what happened to the lights? But Atalanta turned. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, you want to look uh, same heading as the boat, basically. So we're coming off bottom now, right? Or... Or are we gonna stay down a little longer? Uh, we're recovering to deck. Okay. <clears throat> we're actually past our uh, a lot of time by a bit there. So what we have been doing is uh, looking at some columnar basalt, which is an igneous rock that cooled in such a way that it fractures into these hexagonal columns. And uh, pretty soon we're going to be heading up and recovering the vehicles. Yeah, now we'll have a zero, zero, d uh, sorry, zero delta tail to tail. So you can turn your auto head off now. And if you look in the uh, on the utility page there, I should be making uh, 20 to 25 meters a minute. Correct. Yeah, yeah you could keep the delta somewhere between uh, 0 and 10 positive. That would be great. Or keep uh, Herc in the Atalanta Afghan. going to uh, <clears throat> check where all of our toys are. So,
Larry, do you want to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing tomorrow? Tomorrow, we're going to be steaming a long way, and we're heading, heading to uh, <laughs> south of uh, the Big Island. And then there, we're going to dive. We should get there at about lunchtime, I think. And there, we're going to start a dive on something called the Pinnacles. And these are two big, uh, very steep-sided, uh, well, Pinnacles. Big, i got to get video of that. Big mounds. Um, and uh, they have a, a variety <laughs> of uh, corals and, and holotherians and Again, it's supposedly quite a spectacular spot and be perfect for Jonathan's cameras. Yeah. For those for those less inclined to think about the geology and, and more <laughs> about the the soft and fuzzy stuff uh, uh, on the outside. Maybe some cute fish. Um, has there ever been a hurricane during a dive? During a dive, well, I don't know. We'll talk to the most experienced folks around, so the. Dan, I guess you probably usually have... we try to get out of the way of a hurricane. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. something must have happened bad. Uh, if I can make 25 meters a minute, yeah, one hour to surface. There, they have sped up for you, Larry, so that you're not going to be late. <laughs> To the, to the deck. Okay, all our toys are put away. <clears throat> Official risk <coughs> screen recording there. Uh-oh. We're getting some big swells. <laughs> okay. So we have a viewer asking uh, what's the best that we found, so maybe we want to go around the room and talk about what the coolest thing you've seen is. I don't know. What do you think, Taylor Ann? You want on, to start uh, on this trip, or, or? Uh, it doesn't this specify. Trip. Just asking, what's the best you found? Um, yeah, the best. It's so hard to pick. Uh, <laughs> I'll pick one biological and one uh, non-biological thing. Uh, so. I think the coolest was the whale fall. I got a tattoo of that because I thought it was really cool and it was my first year. Um, and it was the last dive of the expedition and we weren't really seeing anything for a while and saw a hard return on that sonar and we thought it was a rock and then came up upon the whale fall, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, well, why don't you explain what a whale fall is? Oh yeah, so a whale fall is when uh, a whale dies and falls to the bottom of the seafloor. That's a really good food source for all organisms in the deep sea because food is a rare thing. It's very, very rare to get a lot of food too, something like a large whale. Um, so we got to see the skeleton of the whale, meaning all of the uh, tissue and fat and things were already fed on and gone by the time we saw it. So uh, yeah, pretty rare event to see. Um, it will, yeah, it was how, really amazing. How long do you think it takes from a whale to fall on the bottom to just be the skeleton. Yeah, it could take a while. Um, I know when we uh, saw it in 2019, we came back a year later to see what had been eaten. And in just a year, the entire skeleton had been eaten almost down completely. There was wow. just little bits left. Um, so that's pretty amazing within a year. Those wow. worms and potentially other organisms, organisms were feeding on that. Yeah, and then non-biological was seeing the um, World War II wrecks from um, 
the USS Yorktown, Akagi, and Kaga. I was here for that expedition, NA-154, um, and that was really moving to be a part of that team, uh, a team of both both sides of the World War II um, coming together to kind of uh, give closure to that, that sad story of the war. Um, but it was really moving and fascinating. Cool. And uh, you can watch that stuff in the highlights and uh, on the YouTube channel or just explore the NautilusLive.org website and you can see the whale fall for yourself too. Larry? Well, if I think back uh, to the expeditions on this ship, I, I, I spent a lot of time at sea, so uh, many other ships, but on, on this ship probably, I think the single most exciting one was uh, expedition Bob and I were on a number of years ago in the Mediterranean in a place called the Rastostenis Seamount. It's a very large flat top seamount that's in the eastern Mediterranean. And I think the top levels off at about 700 meters and it goes down to maybe 3,000 meters on the side. And it looks like the Devil's Tower, but it's not columnar basalts like this. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big what we call carbonate platform. It, oh, it, it was, oh. It's limestone. Um, and we went there because there were reports that uh, it was it had um, what people thought were seats you can put in the, the top. Uh, there were these circular there, holes you know. that uh, the top people had looked at with side scan sonar, and they'd seen a series of circular holes. And they they thought they were uh, whoop. <laughs> under no <laughs> circumstances <laughs> shall the spring center um, function. <laughs> and. Um, we came there and, first of all, right away found out that they were not at all what people thought they were. They were not the result of gas seeps or water seeps, but uh, instead were something called sinkholes. And this was the result of being exposed to the air. So so there was that level of excitement of, of kind of, by being able to look at things as we can see them, showing that uh, 10, 15 papers over the years had been written about these, what they called pockmarks, that they thought were caused one way, and we totally, totally disproved that. But the top of this seamount and the sides turned out to be just amazing. It was a, a major shipping route, ancient shipping route, and so there were wrecks, old wrecks and amphora everywhere, very, very old amphora, very, very old wrecks, more modern wrecks. So it was just, it was just captured because it's too deep for fishermen to be trawling on, so they're not disturbed. And yet just this, this flat top that captures them. The sides of the seamount had the most amazing communities of um, chemosynthetic clams and things like that. And, you know, again, uh, totally unexpected. And this probably had to do with a porous layer and the pressure of the seamount squeezing out fluids. It, it just, everywhere we turned, <laughs> there was just a new and amazing discovery. So it really, um, it really just concentrated the, the excitement of exploration and discovery into, into one leg. And there was another interesting event. We had uh, with us um, a, uh, an astronaut who had just come back from the Skylab. I think her name was Katie Cole, Katie Coleman, maybe? I, I don't, I'm not sure I have it exactly right. Um, and uh, I was sitting on watch and, and the, the van was configured a little differently. The scientists were in the back seat in the old days back there. And all of a sudden, on the headset, I hear a voice come in, and it's not a voice I recognize. There's nobody in the van, and it said, "Is is Katie there?" And uh, I, I said, "Well, she she's not in the lab right now. Um, you know, who, who's who's asking?" Her? And and they say, "Oh, this is the Skylab." <laughs> So somebody had patched the Skylab, or the, the space station, the International Space Station, excuse me, the space station had patched it into the, into oh, the wow. ship here. That's and so really here cool. We were, here we were sitting in the middle of the Mediterranean doing this amazing ocean exploration and talking to the, the space, International Space Station. You know, it, that was really a, a, a really exciting moment, too. Wow. Um, we have a question and then we can continue on. Um, it says, I'm currently in high school and want to enter the marine biology field after college and everything, but I want, uh, I don't know where to start. My school has no dedicated marine science class, 
no clubs for such a thing either. Do I find an internship? Are there even internships for people of my age? Yeah, they sound a lot like me. I grew mm -hmm. up in the Midwest. Uh, I went to school in Indiana. Really wanted to study marine biology, but had no access to it whatsoever. Uh, I applied for so many internships and uh, opportunities for marine science experience. Mm -hmm. um, I was a finalist for the Holling Scholarship, but unfortunately was not chosen, so I didn't get that. Uh, I applied for a lot of other scholarships as well. Um, and if I did receive them, it was really hard because I was uh, from a single parent home. So a lot of the marine uh, scholarships didn't, you know, or internships didn't offer money or relocation fees and things like that. So it wasn't until after undergrad that I got my first experience in marine science. So don't let like no's discourage you. If it's really challenging to get to the place you want to go to, it's more rewarding when you get there. Um, the program that I ended up doing was at Duke Marine Lab. It was a scholarship program where I got to go there for an entire semester and do an independent research project and take some courses. So that's how I got my uh, hands wet <laughs> or my feet wet. Um, yeah, so it's, it's totally possible to do it if you're not in a marine environment. It is a little bit harder, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but don't let that discourage you, just keep pushing forward. Yeah, that's um, great advice. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that, that's wonderful advice, but it, Taylor Ann brings up something that's quite interesting, and, and, and this is another, I think, reason not to be discouraged. Um, although it's becoming more common that undergraduate programs will focus on oceanography, historically, oceanography is really a field that you enter at the graduate student level. So. If you're interested in marine biology, certainly starting out with internships or, or an undergraduate in biology will be a perfect way to, to, to answer that. It, it, as I said, there are probably still, I don't know, Dan, probably only a handful of schools now that, that offer undergraduate degrees yeah. in, in oceanography. Yeah, so I just got a general biology degree when I was an undergrad. Yeah, so that's exactly, so that's not yeah. uncommon. And you can volunteer in labs. I, I volunteered in, a, I think, a, what was it? Some type of an aquatic lab. I don't remember the name of it at the, at the moment, um, where I just counted bacteria and got to do my own project too in there. What was that? You didn't count shrimp? <laughs> no, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but so yeah, there are opportunities. Definitely talk to professors, ask them if you can get involved in their lab. Um, that's how I got started. I think that looks really good on, on your resume. Um, to show that initiative where you, you know, get into research as early as your freshman and sophomore year of undergrad. But, but even as a high schooler, I mean, yeah, the, the yeah. opportunities are, you know, it, are, are all out there. You're talking about a very specialized field. But the best thing you can do right now is to really concentrate on your scientists and make sure you know them as a, as a going out as a high schooler, yep. know your scientists, right? Yep. And then look for a school that then you can then branch out to. And the other thing is, it's on the web here. So you're doing the right thing. You're under, by being on Nautilus Live and trying to understand all the things. So you don't have to be where you, you don't have to be anywhere other than by the web right now and bring this stuff in and just be as knowledgeable as you can to the university that you decide to go to. And there's many. So if you don't get into one, um, I think that's the one advice I'd give to you know, young students right now is, there's not one path anymore. I mean, there's the universities teach very similar things of being at almost many, many universities now over my uh, career. Here. They teach very similar styles, very similar things. Now they all are different and they all cater to different things. So, you know, that's really what you get is a little bit of catering to what you, you want to do. But the fundamental sciences are, are, are taught very similarly. So, Take it, you know, just find something that you can go and follow your passion. Because I never thought I'd be here when I was there. It's just, mm -hmm. this is where my passion took me. And you have to realize that as long as you're willing to do that, then you, you will find it. Yeah, it sounds like this person has drive already. Yep. Yeah. Well, no, exactly. have... just, just following this and asking this question is yeah. A, yeah. A, good, a good indicator. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like you're on the right path, so keep it up. And yeah, don't let that passion die. Yeah, keep that passion alive. Do, do you want to go next and talk about what 
your favorite thing is that you've seen? Or? Well, this is the first time on this ship, so mm. therefore, and this is kind of the first dive flight, so <laughs> the basalt columns are my favorite, of course. They were beautiful. That's exactly where they need to be. Uh, yeah. That made it easy. That yeah. was easy. Um, mine has to be hydrothermal vents. Um, when we went to the Cayman Islands, we saw some of those when I was on Nautilus last, and I'm super excited about that again. Um, so very cool. Um, looks like um, Manel's a little busy. Rai, do you want to talk about your favorite thing? Yeah, um, I mean, you already said hydrothermal vents, and for me, that was one of the highlights was uh, the last expedition I was on around Vancouver Island, we went and saw a bunch of hydrothermal vents. Um, but we also saw some dolphins on the way down in Atalanta. And honestly, for me, that was pretty cool. <laughs> wow. Very cool. Dan, you want to? Yeah, if you're talking about hydrothermal vents, uh, specifically on a hydrothermal vent, there's two things that are very cool. Um, Probably for me, Nirvana is a shot of a flange pool with an ROV, which is uh, usually challenging. So a flange pool is basically an upside down lake where the hydrothermal vent is um, forming a structure that captures the, the uh, vent water. And because it is um, warm, it's lighter than seawater, but it's also denser. So it looks exactly like if you're looking at a pristine alpine lake that's perfectly calm and you're seeing the reflection of all the trees and such. It looks like that upside down and uh, with lots of really cool sparkly colors in it. Mm -hmm. So they're, uh, they're a rare treat even when you're uh, working around the hydrothermal vents. And because most ROVs look down, to look up at one is um, it has to be just right to get a, to get a good shot of it. The first time I was ever piloting the ROV and and came up uh, came across one I was so nervous and shaking I could you know I just completely ruined the shot I couldn't even get close to it I was so excited uh, the other really cool thing on a hydrothermal vent is being uh, landed 60 meters up on the structure and zoomed in at the very top of one of the chimneys that has uh, and I don't know if this is a real thing or not but i've heard the term phase separation so it looks like the vent is on fire like it looks like a burner on your <laughs> on your gas stove yeah. and i'm told that that has to be a certain condition of temperature and depth and volume and a whole bunch of things i don't understand but it really looks cool especially if you have uh, the black background in the back and uh, so yeah those are two of my favorites for a hydrothermal vent on this boat probably my favorite uh, recent biological observation there's uh, literally hundreds of them but on the last cruise we encountered a sea dandelion which is a benthic siphonophore and they're also challenging to get a good image of because they put out um, they're basically a, a siphonophore so they're very uh, fragile and they put out all these strings and anchor themselves and they're usually in a crack or a crevice somewhere uh, where they don't get blown away and uh, the first couple of those I saw, everyone in the room is always excited and trying to get in there without just the thruster wash, slightest thruster wash of the vehicle will just, you know, cause them to dislodge and blow away. So we had a really fantastic shot of, of one on the last expedition. And we were really fortunate to get in and uh, uh, land and get some time to, ob to observe it. And uh, I wasn't so nervous I was able to <laughs> park the ROB and and get some good images of it. So. You're starting to sound like a scientist, Dan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, get it by uh, osmosis sitting in this room. Lots and lots of, uh, I could go on for days for, it never gets old. I see something new almost every single dive, certainly every expedition. And uh, one of my other favorite things about this job is uh, uh, every single expedition, there's um, a new group of people that we're working with. And the experience of working with a new team every time is, uh, I find that very refreshing. This, you know, meeting new people, 
learning their strengths and weaknesses and learning to work together in a very challenging environment and often uh, fast paced and uh, every dive is the most important dive we've ever done to me and uh, that never gets old as well. So. I like the, the tail camera view. Let me see. Hurt back there. Yeah. Swimming as fast as I can to keep up, I assume. What was that, Larry? I said I like the tail cam view. And you see Herc in the distance there, swimming as fast as it can to keep up, I guess. Is that the... Yeah, Herc's uh, making some incredible time, 27 meters a minute. He probably wants to get back before dinner. Totally. We want time to move cameras around yeah. to... Uh, what are we going to do with the... Any ideas? I, th I think he's. Photogrammetry. I, yeah, tomorrow. I think he's going back to the photogrammetry mode. Wow. But uh, it will be Jonathan's call, of course. Because we're going to go up the uh, coral. That's going to be an easy one because we've uh, cleverly left the brackets you can see there on the porch. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> we just literally have to move uh, four hose clamps and. Is that one bad wrap on the winch off on the right side? Is it just yeah, we have uh, we've had that issue ever since we put the 7,000 meters of cable on there. Mm -hmm. So uh, we actually spooled it at the beginning of the season, all 7,280 meters off onto a spool on the on the uh, dock, and very carefully spooled it back on. And it was great for like one dive. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a Liebe shell at the uh -huh. very... Uh, at the bottom, yeah. Yeah, which is uh, basically a kind of spaghetti looking thing with right, all the yeah. tracks. And yeah, it makes the cable... It sets the first lay. Then. Yeah, it sets the first lay and it, uh, more importantly, it makes the cable transition the same on every, mm -hmm. in every spot across the in, drum. In theory. In theory. But we have a little bit of run out on the drum, which means the drum flanges are about a quarter inch difference at the root of the drum versus the top of the flange. Mm -hmm. So they're, uh, they're not perfectly parallel with each other. So the spacing between the two drum flanges is Start a little bit different change, on yeah. the higher layers than yeah. the bottom layers. So if one is uh, not... You just need a big C-clamp. Yeah. Uh, to to true the drum up would be uh, challenging in there. But it, it hasn't, it was uh, very frightening when we first encountered it and we spent uh, quite a bit of time trying to uh, get get it back out. And we were at depth, so we were paying in, paying out, and we had someone down in there correcting with the level line. But we've determined that um, uh, it's, not really an issue unless it gets excessive where the cable is crossing over the yeah, other. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Well, I've had, had Lexus France with the deep toe cable. It always had problems. The level yeah. line never was this tuned winch appropriately. And the only issue was when there was a big crossing. In the exactly. Yeah. This winch behaves uh, a lot better than a lot of the 20-year-old uh, Dynacon winches I've worked on in the past. It's been touch wood, very reliable. That's, uh, of course, uh, the heart of the system. Without that, we don't get off the deck or, more importantly, back on the deck. It's uh, with our new de deck crew has uh, got lots of uh, love and maintenance and sweat and cursing. Uh, they, they're down in there every day uh, during the expedition and uh, after and before uh, doing maintenance on there. There's a lot of moving parts on there and a lot of horsepower and yep. Um, some people are writing in that, uh, about their favorites, the super salty dead lake under the sea. Yeah. Uh, I think the the brine pool is that the brine name? Pools, the yeah, brine pools. Yeah, yeah. Um, something I never believed I, until I wasn't there, but boy, that was spectacular to see. Yeah. Uh, somebody agrees with Taylor Ann about the whale fall and then an octopus's garden. Oh, so that's the one with all the white octopus. 
octopus is right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what, that was like crazy cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was the uh, the same expedition. Um, we that got to see both of those. Yeah. That was your first one, wasn't it? To yeah, uh, pretty epic way to start. It was. <laughs> I've been really fortunate to be and able to Anna, be on Anna, all Anna, ROV Anna, cruises. Anna was out there, yeah. What was that? Uh, what, my, one of our students, Anna. Anna. Hart? What? Anna. Like, oh, oh, now I'm in trouble. Um, yeah, Hart. Yeah. Annie. Annie, Annie Hart? Annie something? Hart. Yes, yeah, 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 I know yeah, Annie. Yeah, yeah, so she. She's been looking at that octopus garden as part of a thesis. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah. Somebody's writing in about our class mascot, Slow-Mo. Our what? Uh, the class mascot. Oh. Slow-Mo. Oh, Slow-Mo? Yeah, they said, hi, Slow-Mo. <laughs> How's the adventure going today? It's going great. We saw some really awesome rocks. Um, Chris, do you want to talk about your favorite, or do you want me to come back to you? No, uh, yeah, I can, I can go. Uh, I don't know. I just kind of like the variety of things. I've done everything from like shipwrecks. That was actually my first dive, the USS Independence. That was uh, interesting and challenging and sort of really cool. Uh, some of the hydrothermal vent stuff that Dan was talking about was uh, pretty amazing and also very challenging technical working conditions there too. Yeah. Um, We, uh, in the Papahanao Mukuakea Marine National Monument, we saw some fantastic uh, corals and sponges. Like, you start to, you get kind of numb to them. <laughs> and then you see a picture of Argus, or so you see a per her picture of Hercules next to these things, and you realize just how enormous they are. Uh, you just kind of start to lose perspective. So it was really... Enormous, you know, coral fa and sponge fo uh, formations and and uh, super dense. We did some photogrammetry. That was some of the early days when we were yeah, when I was just did. starting to mess around with that. We did some photogrammetry of those. That was cool. Yeah. Uh, so those were some of the highlights. Cool. Manel, you want to talk about favorites? Yeah. So this is actually my first dive with the Nautilus, well not the first dive, but this is my first expedition and one of the first dives. Um, but on the my first research vessel, we saw some chimeras, um, which were really cool. Uh, I had never seen them before. And we were kind of just, I don't actually, we didn't really have like an expedition objective necessarily. So we were kind of just, the RV was diving and we were seeing what we could see. Um, but yeah, that was that was really cool. Pretty sure we saw a uh, stingray and its baby, and the stingray tried to, you know, kind of cover up the baby so that we wouldn't get it. Um, that was really cute to see. Um, but yeah, those are those are actually my some of the only experiences that I have. So I'm looking forward to making some new memories on, on this leg. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, you're going to see some really amazing things in the next few weeks here. <laughs> yeah, I'm really stoked. So on my very first uh, submersible dive, it was a Pisces submersible uh, up on the Laurentian fan uh, off uh, Canada, Nova Scotia, and Newfoundland. Um, we were down about 2,000 meters or so, and we saw what I now know was a chimera fish, but I, I had no idea, and, and nobody, there were, there were two geologists and the pilot, and we had no idea. <laughs> and so we described it as a Hindu slipper nose fish. <laughs> it looked like uh, the in the movies, the, the Hindu slippers with mm -hmm. the Your pilot. Curly, your, pi on the front. <laughs> your pilot must have been Riven Mills. <laughs> yeah. How'd you know that? Because uh, he's gone on about the voodoo slipper nose fish for <laughs> 20 years. Wow. There you go. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Every time we see one, he would get so excited. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Well, that was a name from the past, boy. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, he's still involved with Nautilus. He oh. um, designed the new uh, frame, and um, we had him down in San Pedro helping us do some maintenance uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we did have a question about the ROV a little bit ago um, and why it doesn't implode. Do oh, it implodes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes catastrophically. We have, uh, in fact, on the last dive, flooded uh, Ethernet bottle. And uh, several years ago, we flooded one of the Argus bottles. Uh, they don't implode because they have... Um, uh, typically, they they leak as opposed to imploding, so they don't have a catastrophic failure. They're made from uh, titanium or stainless steel, and um, everything that goes on this ROV is uh, pressure tested to uh, 12,000, um, basically full ocean depth. So it's tested to, uh, let's see. No, it's tested to, uh, well, so I take that back. Some of it's tested right to the rated depth of 4,000 meters, uh, which is about 400 bar. Yeah. Um, some of it we take up to um, 6,000 meters or roughly 600 bar. Just depends on what the safety factor of the, of the uh, housing is. For example, these new cameras that are on the vehicle were all tested to uh, 6,000 meters several times. So they go into a, a big pressure chamber and they're uh, cycled slowly up and down uh, to the rate of depth and back. And uh, so most of the uh, components on Hercules are small enough to be able to take off and, and uh, perform those tests and they're actually certified so uh, if there's a failure of one that implosion could cause a catastrophic failure which could uh, cause other devices on the vehicle to fail. Uh, for example if one of the big main cameras uh, if we were to uh, penetrate the lens with a manipulator uh, it could possibly uh, cause a violent enough implosion to take out other cameras and uh, components on the vehicle. But that has happened before, and it's usually a crack, and um, it floods rapidly, but not uh, catastrophically. And uh, flotation on Hercules is solid uh, syntactic foam, which is uh, a bunch of microspheres mixed with epoxy to a certain uh, density, and that provides the flotation for Hercules, and, and um, that's a known technology that's been around for many, many decades, and is used uh, throughout the uh, throughout the subsea industry on devices to make them float. So all, all the uh, all the materials and components on here are have a long history of. Uh, being used in this environment and we're very careful on anything that is uh, is not for example a new camera system and we did in fact yeah we flooded the uh, cinema camera that we're using on um, one of its very first dives and it was a new design it had been pressure tested but uh, what happened was um, we ran it on deck long enough for the internal uh, components to heat up and it pushed the dome away from the ceiling surface just enough to allow seawater in. So when we dove the vehicle, everything was great. And then uh, we had a ground fault and the camera failed, I think, I don't know, somewhere before 500 meters. So it was sent back to the manufacturer and of course required all new components inside, but they also redesigned the uh, ceiling interface for the main dome, the nine inch dome that uh, is on the front of the camera. So you can't always cover all the all the uh, possibilities in a harsh environment. And one of them, the operators <laughs> running the camera all night on deck to download data out of it and getting it too hot. 
but uh, we try. Uh, that one of the other things that's uh, unique on uh, on these ROVs is uh, we use what's called an oil compensator. So uh, any volume that's uh, not a one atmosphere electronics uh, housing is full of uh, mineral oil, and that mineral oil is connected to a oil compensator, which consists of a bladder with a spring. And the spring and the bladder, one side of the bladder is open to the surrounding seawater pressure. So, and the spring biases the bladder to have a positive pressure in it. And um, we have probably half a dozen of those on the vehicle. And that's the gauges that you hear us talking about or looking at. So those always maintain a positive pressure uh, no matter what depth we're at. They always read somewhere between 1 and 10 PSI in our case. And uh, therefore, we can have a soft uh, cable, basically like a garden hose. We can take a garden hose and put a bunch of wires in it and co connect it to uh, a very thin-walled housing with a clear cover on it and connect that to a compensator. And as long as we have all the air out, uh, it maintains positive pressure the whole time. Kind of an analogy I've heard is... Uh, take a balloon and blow it up and uh, put it in the water. That's, I don't think, a very good analogy. <laughs> so probably some better ones out there. So for those of you tuning in just now, we are um, ascending and probably like within the half hour or so maybe we'll We'll have the vehicles on deck or just about. If you have any questions, scroll down a little bit and you'll see a white box that, uh, where you can send, a mes send us messages and questions. If you're watching on YouTube, go to nautiluslive.org and you'll see the box right there. Type us a question. And uh, there's a lot of resources on the Nautilus Live website. Um, you can see the whale fall that Taylor Ann was talking about. You can see hydrothermal vents that most of us are ex really excited about. Um, lots of cool videos. Um, 3D tours of the ship. Activities. You can read all about the specifications of Hercules and Atalanta and uh, EV Nautilus. Very informative stuff. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we it's like really calm for a while and then the swells come back and uh. Yeah, they're definitely coming through in sets. Pete, do you want to talk about your favorite? No. <laughs> I do have a story, actually. Oh. Uh, a month, two months ago, when we did Ocean Networks Canada. Uh, oh, what was the what was the question? Um, like your favorite thing that you've seen. Oh, yeah. You know. So my you... first uh, ROV dive. We had gotten down to a very shallow platform for Ocean Networks Canada. I forget, it was only like 500 meters. And um, we got to the platform. Our uh, manip mm -hmm. went out to start to do some work. And lo and behold, a octopus came flying out from underneath and started attacking the arm. What? Oh, wow. the, yeah, there, there, there's <laughs> been questions about stuff attacking ROVs. Yeah. So yeah. yes, the answer would be yes. There. <laughs> yes, there is. Wow. And it's, uh, I think it's on TikTok. It was had a had like a million or two million hits on it. Oh no, that was the crab. We had a crab that was interacting with the manip. 
Oh my gosh. But the octopus was fascinating, so that's somewhere on. Okay, what the, should people search for? Just um, octopus attacks ROV might, okay. might trigger something, but I'm not 100% cool. sure. Wow. Yeah, that was cool. And then it just, did it just get spooked and go away? Oh no, oh no. <laughs> it would not let up. Uh, the presumption was there was a, it was a home and possibly a nest or, or eggs protecting, oh, wow. it was protecting. So apparently that's um, unusual for them to go after an ROV. Normally they just go away. Yeah. But this one was fighting the minette. Wow. So that was cool. So yes, I do have. <laughs> I wonder if Rye was there, but she sounds busy right now. Someone wrote in saying that uh, there's videos of eruptions that can be found on, on Hui's website, uh, underwater volcanic eruptions. Yep. It looks like it might have been on an expedition to Mariana. Mm -hmm. I think Noah had uh, a Ring of Fire expedition years ago that caught a number of very explosive uh, eruptions oh, wow. underwater. It was really some spectacular footage. Yeah, we, I got a question during an interaction this morning about do we feel earthquakes on the ship? And I, tell me if I answered wrong, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said it, you, you might, we might feel, depending on how far away it is, right, and how big, maybe if there was like some subsidence or mudslide or something under, under you know in the ocean uh we might feel it like a little bit but that's no i, I, I don't think so um, not at all not not in the deep sea yeah. no because you would have, like you have to be closer to shore it'd be worse right that's what I yeah. Said. So, yeah so what what happens and this is why tsunamis yes sir i didn't know i had it on i don't but uh is that okay now? No, let's see. Um, so an earthquake is a movement of the crust on the seafloor if it's uh, if it's at the ocean, sometimes deep in the crust, um, and that movement, if you have deep water above it, the movement is only often centimeters or or. You know, a few feet at the most. Sometimes, you know, the, I, I, we we actually went and mapped the one, the Indonesian earthquake, and it was, mm. it was probably, it was it was quite impressive. You know, two meters, almost six feet, seven oh, wow. feet yeah. of of movement between two plates that you could actually see it had slipped. But what that does is now pushes the water above it. it you know, the earthquake is so powerful it pushes the water above it. Um, but one or two feet will just create a little tiny wave in deep water. Yeah. So there'll be a wave that maybe will be a few feet. And we probably wouldn't feel that or notice it really. But as that wave travels very, very fast, yeah. all that energy, and gets into shallow water, it yeah. then starts to interact with the bottom. Once it starts feeling the bottom, and it builds up into the large tsunami. So, so earthquakes that, are, that occur offshore 
you you don't you wouldn't feel that motion because it's it's just taken up by the the water column really and there's buoys right like there are buoys so, to measure yeah. that yeah so they'll they'll measure that very sensitive mm -hmm. small wave and yeah. yeah and predict well send the message that it's on its way yeah Uh, somebody's asking if we're finished for today. Yes, we pretty much are. We're um, ascending and we're going to take the vehicles out uh, and head to our next location, which is a 17 hour transit to the Big Island. Yeah, so we should be going in just after lunch tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so tune in uh, about noon Hawaiian time. What's the, do you know what the depth is for tomorrow? Like for tomorrow's how? dive? I'm yeah. not sure, but it should be, I think it's about the same thing, 16, 1700 okay. meters, I think. Mm. Let's see if I have any notes in my little notebook. I have, I have a whole description in, in my room, but let's see if I have any notes here. And that's where we're gonna be looking at pinnacles. Yeah, I'm actually over here trying to finalize that dive plan and before we have our meeting a little bit later today. So do you know the depth? Um, yeah, so we have two reporting. So from the hurl dives with the Pisces, um, they were at deeper depths and when it is where they saw the, the large pinnacle walls covered in crinoids. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also some information from the Okeanos D2 ROV dives at a little bit shallower depths, about 450 meters, uh, where they also saw some interesting geological features with lots of different coral species. Um, so both of those locations would be good opportunities to test uh, the ability of this photogrammetry and to get fine scale detail in those models. Taylor, and maybe you can answer this question. Uh, during an interaction earlier today, um, some of the kids were asking about, a, I think it was a yellow blob that was spotted like to, to this year, like to one of these recent expeditions, and they were wondering if it had been identified. You know, I'm not too sure what that yellow blob is, but I can definitely look through our highlights and ask around okay. um, and see if I know what it is. Um, yeah, I told them I would get back to them because I... Yeah, uh, I don't yeah, think I've, I've seen pictures yet of that. I don't... Uh, if you have I, so it in talking, the studio, I could totally take a look. Um, so I was talking to, to Madison about it, and she thinks maybe it happened in August. In August, okay. Yeah, so that might help. Okay, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, we always find some quite interesting blob-like <laughs> organisms. <laughs> yeah. And um, that's a question really often, too, of do you find anything new? And yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Almost uh -huh. at least every year, I think there's, yeah. you know, something new to, to be seen. Yeah. If it's not like a new organism, it's new behavior, you yeah. know, that's which is really fascinating because like we were talking about before, right? The ocean's not as explored. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't know that much about its surface and, you know, compared to Mars or the moon. Yeah. So yeah. there's so much left to learn. Yeah. There's, yeah, quite often new species are identified. Um, sometimes species or, or organisms on the seafloor look very similarly, but when you collect them, their genetic code is very different. Um, and then also, like you said, new behaviors is something that we do observe. Um, and that's, that's quite rare, um, too, to see a, a behavioral response or... Um, like a predation event. I know on the last expedition we saw um, an octopus that had died or passed away um, and it was just kind of settled on the rocks and we saw some crabs feeding on it, which was something I had never seen before. Oh, wow. So that was pretty interesting. Yeah, so I'm looking at the dive report from the Pisces at the pinnacle site and, and the, the bottom there was 1,282 meters and then they followed the pinnacle up uh, and they left at about 1,075. That's one report. There's another report here. Mm. Oh, 1,397 meters. This one up slope to the west. Dyke features 1,252 meters. I have some images on my laptop here uh, from those sites. Let's see. 
So these are the more dramatic images that I saw from the hard drive that Daniel brought over um, from the Pisces mm -hmm. dives. So some of these steep walls, these aren't very great images, but mm -hmm. um, covered in lots of crinoids. And then the other site looks more like, like this. It's a lot more shallower, uh, or a lot you, more shallow. And, and you said the Okeanos went back? Yeah, so this was in 2015 with the mm -hmm. Okeanos. Mm -hmm. And then the Pisces dives were in 2011, I believe. Mm -hmm. And they said, they mentioned here, in this one they couldn't find it, but it was the feature discovered in 1998. Wow. Originally. Yeah, we're having, Rennie is pulling up the, the bathymetry of the area, mm -hmm. and we're going to get a good look at that to, to decide mm -hmm. where our waypoint targets will be. Great. We are just under 300 meters, um, and we are currently ascending. And then tomorrow the adventure continues. <laughs> Indeed. Did you guys get to go up and see the islands as we were kind of moving out of the way of these swells yesterday? I, I just saw a little bit. Yeah. I was, uh, had, a, had a meeting. <laughs> yes. But it was quite spectacular, the little bit I saw. Yeah. So yesterday we had, well, we still have swells. So we, we could have like a little bit of a better sleep. We moved to the other side mm -hmm. of Molokai Island uh, and then came back to this site that we just finished driving on. It's beautiful. There's a rainbow this morning. Oh, I heard. I, he I heard I, about that. I didn't see it. I yeah. didn't see it either because I was doing an interaction, and when I came out, I just missed the rainbow. Yeah, somebody, and then there were dolphins. Yeah, somebody yesterday. said it was a double rainbow. Oh wow. Um, and th we saw we saw one dolphin yesterday, but it was really quick. It kind of surfaced like maybe twice and was yeah. gone. Um, I just oh, got a little bit of the rainbow. That is beautiful. Just a little bit. Oh wow! Wow. <laughs> And That's all that was left by the time I got <laughs> out there. And, and some boids, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited about the pinnacles. That should be really cool.
So for those of you joining us, we are currently at 175 meters and ascending. We just uh, took a look at some really cool basalt, columnar basalt, uh, which forms because of the way it cools. It makes these hexagonal columns and uh, we map those out so Jonathan can make some really cool 3D rendering and we can use it for um, IMAX theaters and dome theaters, which is really exciting. And we're shortly going to be putting the ROVs on the deck, recovering them, and then we will transit for about 17 hours to the Big Island. Getting closer. <laughs> We're about a hundred meters away. Oh, Taylor and somebody wrote in. Uh, just check the Noah's site and the golden egg from August 30th remains a mystery. That will be helpful uh, mm. for me to know how to look up that image. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, whoever wrote that in. So was it collected? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I, I, yeah. I can't remember. I don't, yeah, I wasn't um, what, on board then. What so. the teacher said. I think she said that she thought that it was collected. Okay. Yeah, then that means probably somebody is working on, oh. maybe not yet, but will be working on identifying what it is. Mm -hmm. um, probably using genetics. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah. Pretty blue water. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, I always have to keep my eyes peeled. You could see sharks. <laughs> <laughs> and there were um, whale sharks on some of the other legs, right? I would love to see a whale shark. I have not yeah. yet, but I know others have. Um, All right, Dr. Ballard said take this up, feed you guys. Go ahead, Bridge. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, I thought we weren't supposed to get close. <laughs> we, we, we just hit five zero meters. 
Yep, nav switching to radio comms. Thank you. All right, I'm going to let the deck know we're at 5 0. Deck, deck, nav, all stop 5 0 meters. Just a reminder for the control room that it's only operational talk until the ROV is on deck. Thank you. Hey, look, there's an orbit. Nav, nav, back deck. I have eyes on Hercules. Hercules is just to starboard of the A frame foot. Nav copies. I can, uh, I can adjust. It's going to take a second, so at 10 meters, it's just, yeah. Yeah, what? He's trying to besmirch my good nav name. Look at now it's uh, now you're port where you should have been because you thrusted. Bad advice. Nav, nav, deck. We have Hercules center line on the A frame. Nav copies.
twang. All right, are you good to hold position now? All right.
Nav deck, you are 10 meters from the transom. Nav copies. Nav deck, you guys are past the transom. Nav copies past transom. Nav, nav deck, Hercules is out of the water. Nav copies. Deck, deck, nav, power secured. Copies, power is secured. 